So, Shankar and Pillai had. Why well, you're laughing at somebody's ailment? That's not good. Shankar and Pillai had chronic tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. So he went to the doctor. Been festering for a long time, but um, it became too much of a problem, so he went. The doctor took an X-ray and looked big holes in the lungs. He said, uh, "You need to get admitted into the hospital right away." And uh, it takes a minor surgery. And you have to stay in the hospital minimum six months and it'll cost you fifty thousand dollars. Shankaran Pillai said, <coughs> no, no way. <laughs> fifty thousand for sure I don't have. Six months, no way. I can give you hundred dollars, what can you do? <laughs> now, the doctor looked at him, looked at the x-ray, looked at him, looked at the x-ray. He said, well, for hundred dollars I could touch up the x-ray for you. Sadhguru, I have seen almost all of your videos in YouTube channel. <laughs> I feel totally familiar with uh, most of the things that you talk in the videos. Familiar? All right. So, do I really need to attend the inner engineering program? It once happened <laughs> Shankarin Pillai came to the <laughs> Shankarin Pillai came to the Mahamudra restaurant in Isha Life, <laughs> Chennai. This elaborate menu which runs into five, six pages, he read all that carefully and then he asked, I've read the whole menu, do I really have to eat? <laughs> this happened, Shankar and Pillai joined Pentagon, he was working in Pentagon. Then he kept moving his work table from one office to another office, another office to another office, he went on moving around. Then he moved to the corridor, he moved into the garden, he moved here, there. Then he moved into the men's restroom and settled down there and started working. Everybody was looking at this, what's wrong with him, some problem? Initially they thought he's a Russian agent, then <laughs> Then he thought he must be a Muslim terrorist. Then they thought all those things, then everything ran out, he didn't cause any harm to anybody. Then he settled down in the men's restroom and started working. So they told the Pentagon's psychiatrist that this guy's gone loony, he's working in the men's room and he settled down and he's just doing his work there. So the psychiatrist just strolled in as if he wanted to use the men's room and started chatting. Then he found he was quite normal, everything was fine with him. He said, why are you sitting in the men's room and working? He said, I moved everywhere and saw. I, in the end I find this is the only damn place where people know what they are doing <laughs> It's a sweet secret. <laughs> <laughs> so
So one day, <laughs> Sunday, Shankaran Pillai met his three sons and told them, you're good for nothings, do something good in your life. If you do good things, good things will come back to you <laughs> Accent acha hai? <laughs> so, and these kids were something. They said, Father, what are good things? How to do good things? So such a thought had never occurred to them. <laughs> How can we do good thing? What is a good thing? they asked. He said, at least help a old woman to cross the street, at least that much good you do. So they left. In the evening they came back, so Shankaran Pillai asked, did you do any good thing? He asked the eldest son. He said, yes, father, as you said, I helped a old woman to cross the street. That is wonderful, my boy. He asked the second son. He said, I also helped a old woman to cross the street. He thought, both of them? Maybe they were two old women, all right. He asked the third son, he said, I also helped an old woman to cross the street. He said, all of you, you found three old women to help them across the street today? They said, who is talking about three? All of us together, we helped one. What, it takes three young boys to help one old woman to cross the street? No, even we three were not enough. You know our cousin Ramu, we also took his help. <laughs> he asked, what is that, to help a old woman, three of you and Ramu also? He said, yes, you don't know how stubborn this old woman can be. <laughs> she did not want to cross the street. <laughs> we held her by the four limbs. A lot of good things are being done in the world. <laughs> a flower is not thinking of giving fragrance to you. It has no such intention. A tree is not thinking of giving oxygen to you. No such intention in its mind. The earthworm is not thinking of making the earth fertile for your crops. No such intention in his head. He has no head. <laughs> But whatever they do, they are doing good things, yes or no? Whatever they do, whichever way they live, if they eat, they are doing good things, if they sit, they are doing good things. Isn't it so? Because they are just being themselves. They are living according to their nature. So they don't have to think of doing good things. Only because human beings are not living according to their human nature, they have to think up good things. <laughs> and they think up these good things which are unbearable for lots of people <laughs> This is not about you doing good things. If your humanity flowers, what is needed will anyway happen. Like if a flower blossoms, you don't have to tell it, shoot the fragrance in the air. It will anyway happen. Nobody can stop it. Whether somebody is there to appreciate the flower or nobody is there, still the same fragrance will come. When you come more, when you do not come less, no such thing, all the time. There is no good way to be, there is a human way to be. 
if you overflow with your humanity. Divinity has to descend, it has no choice. If your humanity is constipated and you're trying to be good and good, good is not good. Shankaran Pillai fell into the septic tank. I want you to imagine right up till here in filth. Please imagine and see. He tried to get out desperately, he couldn't. Then after some time, he started screaming, fire, fire, fire. Neighbors heard the fire screams, called the fire brigade. The firemen came and looked everywhere, no fire. Then they found him in the septic tank, pulled him out. And then they asked, why were you screaming fire? Then Shankaran Pillai retorted, if I said shit, shit, would you come? <laughs> you must do the right thing, otherwise it doesn't work. So just working hard will not do, you must do the right thing. Otherwise, it doesn't work. ISRO, they've sent a Mars probe now. At uh, ten percent of the cost, what NASA would do normally? Because it's all indigenous and they build it up in their own ways. So they were interviewing people to be taken in for a job in the ISRO. Shankar and Pillai applied. <laughs> She is very street smart, a lot of common sense. So the interviewer asked him, which is closer, Moon or Mumbai? <laughs> They're in Bangalore. Shankaran Pillai looked up in the sky and he said, Moon. He said, what? How do you say that? He said, well, I can see the moon, I can't see Mumbai <laughs> So this kind of sense goes well in certain things. But if you want to transcend, you need a different kind of sense. Shankaran Pillai went to New York City, got into a taxi and the taxi driver was driving to a certain destination. Being an Indian who's just landed in America, he wants to talk to everybody. Well, after all, we're Indians. So taxi driver, he started talking, 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 and then taxi driver also opened up. And then when the destination came nearby, he wanted him to stop, so he put his hand in that small opening and touched him on the shoulder, I want to stop here. The taxi driver jumped out of his skin and lost control over the car and went and hit a tree and went up the tree and stopped like this. And Shankaran Pillai had a bleeding nose and he said, what, what did I do? Why did you just jump like this, I just wanted you to stop. He said, you don't understand, last thirty-two years, I have been driving a hersey. <laughs> Never ever my customers ever <laughs> did this. That is, you know, uh, he's been working for an undertaker, so his customers are always dead. And today, when the customer touches him on the shoulder, <laughs> he lost it. And most human beings are living like this, they're jumpy about everything. They're jumpy about everything because they're living with the dead. If you live with yesterday, you are living with the dead.
please understand, look at this carefully. Everything that you are, your personality is crafted from that which is dead. Your eyes are colored with that which is dead. From what happened yesterday, you look at everybody. So you are living with the dead and in case something alive happens, you will be jumpy, you will jump out of your skin. <laughs> you will see <laughs> when we initiate people, something comes alive little bit, people are jumpy, what's happening? You're coming alive <laughs> You've been dead for a long time. This is called raising the dead. One Shankaran Pillai, when the… at Meghalaya State Lottery <laughs> That's still on? Is it still on or gone? <laughs> no lottery? Okay, at that time. 1984. <laughs> I changed the date, what's the problem? <laughs> After all, we made up the dates. We can use it the way we want it, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Not now, 1984, he won a lottery. And people gathered, press gathered and everybody said, wow, we won a lottery, fifty-six crores. You heard those days, isn't it? So, how did you get this lucky number? So Shankaran Pillai said, I had three consecutive nights I had a dream. In the dream, it said, number eight, number eight, number eight, three times. Three times it appeared, eight, eight, eight. Then I thought, three times eight is thirty-two. And I went for the thirty-two ticket and I got it. And people said, well, three times eight is not thirty-two, it is twenty-four. He said, what does it matter? I won the lottery. <laughs> So I'm telling you, existence does not fit into your logic. It's not logically correct. It's not logically correct, but it's fantastic. That means what's wrong? That means your logic is too limited, isn't it? No, existence is not correct. Why is it not fitting into my logic? And this is the argument of a madman, isn't it? This is the way it is. If your logic doesn't fit into it, there's a problem with your head, not with the existence. You okay for a joke? <laughs> <laughs> Any kind? <laughs> In his previous life, Shankar Pillai was a very good man. After a brief illness, he died. Being a good man, naturally he went to heaven. When he went to heaven, the angels, the reception committee welcomed him and then they opened his account book. You know, there they keep accounts of everything, you know that. They turn pages, good deed, good deed, good deed, good deed, good deed. Cover to cover, only good deeds. Then there was little confusion among the angels. Then they came to Shankaran Pillai and said, Mr. Pillai, there's a little problem. Shankaran Pillai said, what is the problem? They said, see, we have various types of accommodation in heaven. One bad deed, highest level of heaven, sea front view, two bad deeds, Next level, three bad deeds, next level. Like this, there are many levels of heaven. But no bad deed, there is no such accommodation here. <laughs> Till now, we have never received a man like you without a single bad deed. So we don't know what to do with you. Shankaran Pillai said, What nonsense! I was such a good man in the world, nobody wanted to come anywhere near me. <laughs> Excuse me. 
I just lived with the hope of going to heaven. Even here a problem? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is this? Always I was told, being a good man, I can go to heaven. And then I do a good job of it, you have a problem. Then the angels met among themselves, had a discussion and they said, Don't you worry, Mr. Pillai, we have found a solution. We are giving you three hours extra life. Your body is still intact anyway. You go back, just commit one bad deed. We'll put you in the highest heaven, nothing lost. And lo, he became alive here. He sat up once again. He sat here thinking how to commit a bad deed. See, no practice, not like you, you know. <laughs> you never committed one. So he sat there thinking, thinking, thinking. One and a half hours passed away. <laughs> then he suddenly realized, there is a woman well past her prime in the neighborhood who has been casting inviting glances at him. He being a good man, he never looked that way. Now he thought, okay, adultery is a bad deed. So he went. He went to that lady's house and knocked on the door. She came and opened the door. Shankaran Pillai said, I want you. Why, Mr. Pillai, they told me just yesterday evening that you are on your deathbed. What is this? He said, it doesn't matter, I want you. He went in. Whatever he lacked in practice, he made it up with his enthusiasm to go to heaven. Nature took over, things happened. Now, he looked at his time, the watch is ticking away. He doesn't want to die in her house. He wants to go back home and die. So, he is living in a hurry. He said, I need to go, I need to go. And he came to the door. The lady also came to see him off. As he was leaving, the woman said, Mr. Pillai, do you know what a good deed you have done for me today? <laughs> One more good deed. <laughs> you are too good, you will neither make it here nor there. <laughs> because your goodness is always coming in comparing yourself with somebody or something, isn't it? How do you certify yourself, I am a good man? You look at this one, he's not okay, she's not okay, she's not okay, he's not okay, compared to all these people, I am a good man, isn't it? If you want to be really good, you have to make everybody in the world not okay. Please see, those people who think they are very good in their minds, nobody is okay, isn't it so? Have you noticed this? If nobody is okay in the world, it is not a question of goodness, it just means you are sick in your head. On a certain day, Shankaran Pillai's wife was particularly incensed about her husband. So she made a soup and put five extra spoons of chili. And she came and served it, it was hot, steaming hot and she wants to see what happens. <laughs> she wrung her hands but he's reading the newspaper, she said, the soup is ready, she said, the soup is ready, she said, the soup is ready. I said, mm-hmm, and uh, still reading the newspaper. Then she wanted to see whether it really work or if the chili powder is adulterated. Not strong enough. So she thought, uh, let her check it up and took a spoonful and just put it. It just exploded in her mouth. Tears welled up. Tears started flowing. Just at that moment, Shankaran Pillai kept his newspaper down and came. He looked at her and said, why are you crying? <laughs> she said, you know, just last year my mother died. and how much she loved this soup. When I just saw this soup bowl, it reminded me of my mother and tears came. Oh, is that so? Don't worry, it's, you know, what to do? We all lose our mothers and fathers sometime. It's all right. And uh, Sankaran Pillai 
went back to his newspaper with the soup and reading the newspaper, he put it in his mouth, it went boom like a dynamite <laughs> because this was a full spoonful. <laughs> Tears came into his eyes. <laughs> then she came and said, Oh, you're also emotional about my mother. <laughs> he said, No, no, I am not crying because your mother died. I am crying because that good mother left and she left you here and went. <laughs> This is not the way to live. <laughs> when you live, people should enjoy your presence. When you die, they should miss you. If the reverse happens, that means we've lived the wrong way, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Shankaran Pillai's old ambassador wouldn't start. Does anybody still own ambassador? Hmm? No? All of you evolved out of it. <laughs> His old ambassador wouldn't start. So he went home, he had a kitten at home. He brought the kitten, harnessed it to the ambassador. He said, go, let's go, let's go. People looked at this and said, are you crazy? Can this little kitten pull the ambassador car? Generally it takes God to move this car. What are you doing? Shankaran Pillai said, Don't you fool yourself, I have a horse whip. <laughs> you believe, you believe you can do everything hard and it'll work. It'll not work just because you do it hard. You must do the right thing, only then it works, isn't it? If you do not do the right thing, it does not work. People who are successful are successful not because necessarily they work hard, they just know what's the right thing to do. This is the biggest problem. Right from your childhood, your parents taught you, if you study, how much you… how should you study? Study hard. If you work, how should you work? Work hard. You do everything hard. If you do things hard, <laughs> things won't happen. It'll become a donkey's life, just doing everything hard. Nobody told you, you must study in joy. Nobody told you, you must work in love. They told you, you must do it hard. They made their lives very difficult for themselves. Now they were ins they're ensuring that your life becomes difficult too. <laughs> Why do you work hard? What… what are you working hard? If it's hard, give it up. If you can do it joyfully, you do it. Otherwise, don't do it, isn't it? Isn't it so? If you're going to make yourself miserable in the process of working, what use is your work to yourself or to anybody around you? You just sit at the temple gates and beg and eat, it's better. Somebody will throw you one rupee, two rupee, you eat out of it, at least that you do joyfully, sit there happily, eat what people throw into your bowl. If you're going to make it so hard for yourself, I'm sure you're making it very hard for everybody around you, isn't it? If you're going to spread misery in the world, it's better you don't do anything. If you're going to spread joy in the world, go and do as much as you can. It once happened that Shankaran Pillai joined the United States Navy <laughs> and quickly he rose through the ranks and became an admiral. And he was captaining a large battleship 
So, you know, once you are a captain of a battleship, you cannot simply be like this. <laughs> he was also like that <laughs> He was playing his part well. Then he saw on a very foggy night, he saw a dim light. Then he radioed out loud and said, whoever you are, move ten degrees east. Then the reply came back, whoever you may be, please move ten degrees west. Then Shankaran Pillai puffed up. How dare you? Move ten degrees east now. From the other side, a gentle voice came and said, please move ten degrees west right now. Then Shankaran Pillai screamed into the microphone, Do you know who I am? I am a battleship. From the other side the voice came, I am a lighthouse, it's your call <laughs> When you die, hmm? if you die here we'll just plant a tree, we're not going to build a monument for you, we'll just plant a tree. But somewhere else you, you die, they may put a monument for you. It's all right. But uh, when you're alive, you should not act like a fixed monument <laughs> You must be flexible, willing to dissolve, malleable. Malleability is important. Otherwise, how to do work with monuments? You can change the shape of the monument, but still it's a fixed shape. You may be like this, I'll make you like this, but what's the point? Instead of this, you become this. <laughs> Same thing, <laughs> in a different way. So, it's time <laughs> It's time to understand all the problems of individual nature are generated from within. And we don't have to solve problems that we create, we just have to dissolve. Oh, problems that you create, you don't have to solve. If there is a problem in the situation, yes, we have to solve. But you have a problem within you, solution is not what you need, solution is madness. Solution means for an illusion, you're creating an illusory solution, something that you make up. For that, you create one more solution that you made up once again. No, we just have to turn off the problems. You're going through a certain drama, only thing is you're a lousy director. <laughs> That's all there is. Instead of improving your direction, now you're trying to find a solution for a situation in a drama. It's like people watch a cinema and come home and they have big arguments about what happened there <laughs> So, the thoughts and emotions that you create, you don't have to find any solution for it. If you just turn it off, it's gone. If you find solution, you… <laughs> moving towards insanity, because you create a ghost and you create a ghost buster. <laughs> the ghosts that you create, you must learn to play with them. Hello? I'm saying if nobody willing to play with you, you have to play with somebody, right <laughs> So the ghosts you create, if you like them, you play with them. If you don't like them, turn them off. But Sadhguru, they keep coming <laughs> You don't play. Don't like to play with them, don't play. They come and go. Never it ever happened 
that one thought remained for more than a moment, isn't it? It comes and goes, comes and goes, let it come and go. If you try to find a solution for that, you will head towards insanity and you will start thinking, you are uh, Sigmund Freud's progeny <laughs>